this is the very first Audi SQ2 in Australia and it goes, it goes like this. <laughs> yep, 221 kilowatts. It's almost 300 horsepower, zero to 104.9 seconds, all in a little SUV. That's brilliant. Oh. But not everybody wants to be a zookeeper to an animal like this. No, they don't. Which is why there's that, the Q2, it's new. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing a range review, the entire updated Q2 range, from the Integrate Q2 all the way up to the SQ2 King. That's right. At the end, I'm gonna be breaking them down into eight sections, starting with design. What's changed? Price and features, kind of important. Seeing if it's practical enough for you. Ownership costs, like warranty, engine, and the fuel economy safety and what it's like to drive. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to give each section a score out of 10. And at the very end, I'm going to give the entire Q2 range an overall score out of 10. Now, those are the chapter markers right there. Now, rifle through them, pretend it's a sock drawer and try them all on, I won't be offended. And down there, if you're watching on YouTube, are the chapter markers, same goes there. Now, if you want to read the full review, go to carsguide.com.au. Give us a like and subscribe. Ready? Let's go. Yes, it's the tiniest Audi SUV you can get, and it's not any bigger than the previous one. In fact, it stopped growing at 4.2 meters long and just over two meters wide. But you wouldn't expect it to be any bigger. This is just an update to the car. Not much has changed to the angular looks either. They've just added more angles here and, and, and here. It's just more angly, angly, angly now. Yes, those air inlets there, they're bigger, they're pointier, more extreme. And the rear of the car now gets a similar design across the bumper. The 40 TFSI comes with the S-Line body kit, and that makes it look a lot like an SQ2. The SQ2 gets 19 inch alloy wheels though, not 18 inches like the Q2, and it has quad exhaust. Look, they are air inlets on the SQ2, but on the regular Q2, they're just shapes. Now the interior of the Q2 has barely changed. It feels older than Gandalf in here. I'm, I'm serious. It's very, very similar to the A3, which came out originally in 2013. It's, it's almost identical to that, and that was, you know, a long, long time ago. What's new in here is, is that media display. It was a seven inch screen. It's now an 8.3 inch screen, which is good. But, you know, when you compare it to something like the cockpit of the Q3, which looks so much more modern and amazing. This looks, looks ancient. I know what you're thinking. It is real, it's not a moustache filter. Oh no, the other thing. Yeah, okay, so you're wondering how much the price of the Q3 is now. See, I showed you the Q2 cabin, then I showed you the cockpit of the Q3, and now you're wondering, can you afford to get the Q3? Am I right? I might be right anyway. In the Q2 range, there are three grades. It starts off with the 35 TFSI, it steps up to the 40 TFSI S-Line Quattro, and at the top of the range is the SQ2. Now, those are the prices right there. Just so you know, a Q3 starts at about $47,000. Worth thinking about, right? Coming standard on the 35 TFSI are LED headlights, leather seats, dual zone climate, an 8.3 inch media display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's wireless charging, an eight speaker stereo and a proximity key with push button start. <gasps> the 40 TFSI gets all that too, but adds drive select modes, a power tailgate, and of course, all wheel drive. The SQ2 comes with a 12.3 inch virtual cockpit, a Bang & Olufsen stereo and Napa leather seats and that 300 horsepower engine. Let's talk about that. Uh, there are three engines 
to pick from in the Q2 range. The 35 TFSI has a brand new 1.5 litre turbo petrol four cylinder engine. Then there's this, this is the 40 TFSI. It's got a two litre turbo petrol four cylinder engine. It's also got all wheel drive. The 35 TFSI is just front wheel drive. And then there's this. It's also a two litre turbo petrol four cylinder engine, but it makes a lot more grunt. It's also got all wheel drive. Let's talk about the fuel economy. Audi says that after a combination of open and urban roads, that's the mileage each of these three different engines should be getting. Now, not too bad, but where's the hybrid and where's the EV? What? You couldn't see my face? Ah, oh, be fine. Now, in terms of practicality, there is a big reason why I would get a Q2, or an SQ2 in this case, over say an A3 or an S3 sedan. And that is because you've got a taller, wider opening for the rear doors. And that means getting in and out is easier. Headroom is also really good back here, but legroom is also pretty tight. Let me show you the boot. It's not enormous, but it's also not bad. Hooks, cargo nets galore, everything you need. Now inside, it's, it's a fairly tight cabin, um, but there is some okay cabin storage. You've got two cup holders here. You don't have two cup holders in the back. You do have large door pockets in the front there, a tiny, a tiny space in there in the center console bin um, and, and decent door pockets in the back. Now, all Q2s come with AEB with pedestrian and cyclist detection. They also come with blind spot warning. But if you want lane keeping assistance and you want adaptive cruise control and you've bought a 35 TFSI or a 40 TFSI, then you're gonna to need to option it as part of a pack, unless you get the SQ2. And that's got everything. The Audi Q2 comes with a three-year unlimited kilometre warranty. Benz also has a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty. Come on, Audi, you can give us an extra two years. Now, in terms of servicing, there's a five-year plan for both the Q2 and the SQ2. Q2 is about $2,300 for five years, and the SQ2 is about $2,500 for five years. Yeah, it's all over the ground. Now, let's go for a drive. Now, before we do, let's talk about the interior of the SQ2. It's a lot like a regular Q2, only sportier. Yep, you get these beautiful Nappa leather seats. You get this trim across the dashboard here. It does, though, feel pretty much the same as a regular Q2. Now, in terms of the way the regular Q2 drives, I've just driven the 42 FSI. It's got quattro all-wheel drive. The acceleration's not too bad. The ride is actually really good. It's a really comfortable ride. The steering is brilliant though. It's so, it's so spot on. Look, you might not be into driving that much, but um, you're gonna enjoy it either way. What you're really going to love is, is this though, the SQ2. Well, for starters, there's the engine, which sounds amazing. That 221 kilowatts of, of power is just brilliant. You know, in the old days, when I say the old days, 30 years ago, V8s used to make, you know, not even make 220 kilowatts. So out of a four cylinder, that's, that's brilliant. Now this is an SQ2, not an RSQ2, which doesn't exist yet. Maybe it's coming. Um, so it's not, it's not entirely brutal. Yes, that engine is great and the acceleration is amazing and it sounds good too, but the ride itself is not back-breaking. You could live with this day in, day out, driving, doing the school run or go to the shops, that type of thing. It is sports suspension, so it is firm, but it's got to be, if you want, handling. It's also not overly powerful. There's absolutely nothing to be afraid of here. It's not like having a wild dog, a hyena on a leash, not at all. 
In fact, it feels very stable, very controlled, um, and it gives the driver pretty good confidence, uh, especially on roads that are as fun as this. Now, the transmission, it's a dual clutch automatic. It shifts pretty seamlessly. I haven't had a chance to drive it in traffic though, but I have driven this transmission in traffic before in other Audis and there's been no problems. Sometimes dual clutches can, can have a jerky sort of behavior in, in stop-start traffic, but I haven't detected anything like that in this so far. As for the other grades as well, they also have dual clutch automatics. Audi's pretty much nailed those down. Now, in terms of visibility, just everyday stuff, visibility all around is, is, is pretty good. These windows are quite tall. The, the rear window, although it's got that coopy roof line, is, is pretty good too. And look, those C-pillars, those big, they call them blades in Audi speak, um, you know, in that coupe, coupe roof line at the back there, they are quite chunky and you get a bit of a blind spot there, but you do have a damn good reversing camera as well and look you know you'll get around that now time for the scores let's start with design i'm giving it a 7 out of 10. yes it looks great on the outside i love the more angles it looks like a little beastie and that includes the q2 as well but the interior looks really, really dated and looks nowhere near as good as the rest of the cabins in the other Audis. So seven out of 10. For price and features, it gets an eight. It's not bad value. You do get quite a lot of kit. For practicality, it gets a seven. Look, it's more practical than an A3 sedan or Sportback, but it still could be better in terms of cabin storage and boot space. Now for safety, it gets a seven. Don't get me wrong, these are super safe cars. But if young people especially are going to be buying these cars, I'd want to see more advanced safety kit as standard. For engines and transmissions, I'm giving it an eight. It's a good range of engines. And the two liter turbo petrol engine in that is beautiful. For fuel economy, I'm giving it a seven. Look, they're not bad mileages from those three engines, but where's the hybrid? Where's the EV? Now, ownership. I'm going to give it a six out of 10. That three year unlimited kilometer warranty just doesn't cut it anymore. Come on Audi, you can do it. And finally, for driving, I'm giving it an eight out of 10. Look, the regular Q2 is excellent to drive, but this, this is something very special. Eight out of 10. And so that gives us an overall score for the entire Q2 range of 7.3 out of 10. Now, if you want to read the full review, go to carsguide.com.au and give us a like and subscribe.